Arrow functions are a new way to write functions in JavaScript. They're for the most part some syntax sugar over function declarations, but they also bring some change of behavior. Hello, my name is Thiago Tempo and this is Tempo Coding. First, let's just review some ES5 code so we can understand some usages of arrow functions. Let's say I have a setTimeout function which expects a function as a callback to be executed later after a certain amount of time. Before arrow functions existed, to create the callback we would do that by declaring an anonymous function using the keyword function, the parentheses, and the body of the function using braces. One other option would be to declare a named function and pass the name of the function as a parameter for the callback. Finally, we could have written the same code but using a function expression, so assigning the new function to a variable and passing the variable as a callback. This is all fine, but if the declared function is only used inside the callback, you might not see a reason to declare it in a variable or to use a named function. After all, nowhere else in the code that function will be called. That's a great use case for arrow functions. Let's see how the syntax works. First, let me get back to the inline anonymous function. Now, an error function doesn't need the, the function keyword, so I can delete that. Also, after the parentheses, we need the equal sign and the greater than sign. And that's it. This code will work just as before, but with a little less code. Not a lot for sure, but I think that the fact that we don't have the function keyword makes for a more readable code. Now, because the arrow function in this case has just one statement, we could have written it in only one line and without the braces. Actually, because it's just one statement, we don't even need the semicolon. Now that's a lot cleaner. What if the arrow function expected an argument? Well, in this case, we just have to name the argument inside the parentheses and it will work as, no as a normal ar argument. If the function expected more arguments, it would work the same way as with any other functions. We can add them separate by commas. But let's get back to only one argument, because when this is the case, arrow functions can be even more streamlined. When the function expects only one argument, we don't even need the parentheses. We can remove them and it will work the same way. But remember, the parentheses are not needed only when the function expects one argument. If it expects more than one or none, the parentheses are required. As of right now, I have only used arrow functions as callbacks, but that's not the only usage for arrow functions. We can use them as methods or for objects or in functions expressions. But as you can see, the syntax is very simple. Now let's get to the part where arrow functions change the behavior we're used to when using ES5. Let's say I have a constructor function for a person which expects a name argument and it's keeping it as a property of the new instance. Then there is a function called say hello which will log to the console after 100 milliseconds using setTimeout. We know that because setTimeout is not executed synchronously, when the callback function gets executed, the value of this is not the same, and so this dot first name will be undefined. So to fix this in ES5, we use the hack where we save this in a different variable, for instance self, and then instead of referencing this, we would reference self, and that would work. But instead of doing that, I'm going to declare the callback function using an arrow function. And that will also works. It works because in arrow functions, this is lexically determined, meaning that this is determined by the surrounding scope. In our case, this is the object being created, which contains a property called name and a method called say, say hello. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.